I got from a friend of mine this beautiful chip, the LMA49600. And when you go to the data sheet, you can see that it is an op amp in a certain way, but <coughs> an op amp that has an enormous low uh, distortion. Uh, say this value 0 0.000 etc. 3% uh, percent typical. It is from Texas Instruments. And this is the schematic that I made with it. It does not have a high output level, but very good and good enough to drive a headphone. And uh, it is meant, as far as I could see, uh, for a headphone driver with that enormous low uh, distortion. And uh, of course, when you want to make this for stereo, you have to make it two times. But my idea was, well, let me try to make it uh, as a small audio amplifier in the order of 0 0.5 watt output level. And that's here. So the schematic again. One of the say problems, of course not, not always problems, is that I could get it working with a double power supply. And I don't like to make circuits with double power supplies. They are in a certain way ideal because the voltage swing at the output of uh, whatever op amp of or whatever audio and amplifier that works in that way with a double voltage, say a positive and a negative and a zero, has a higher output swing and that means that you can get more energy out with less current. All my circuits uh, audio amplifier circuits are made, say, uh, with a, a one supply voltage, never a double supply voltage. But of course, I have made in the past a double supply voltage, and you can set here the output levels: four volts a positive, four volts negative, etc., etc. And there are two big potentiometers here. And here you can see that both voltages are present, both the negative and the positive voltage. And here is in the middle the zero electrode. Anyway, was an idea uh, to make to say uh, make more different electronic experimental circuits. So. This is the circuit on the breadboard. Uh, breadboard is a piece of soft uh, triplex with brass nails, etc. etc. Um, when you go to the data sheet, let me go to the data sheet. I have time enough as far as I could see. Here is the data sheet, and uh, they are talking here about the buffer connections. And say, my inspiration was made for this very small audio amplifier with its extremely low uh, distortion level. My inspiration uh, was here. I can say skip a little bit further. There's a lot of information on the World Wide Web. Uh, via which you can say find your own way with this chip. Be it as a um, audio amplifier and it can even be used in a voltage supply. The good thing of this chip is that it has an enormous bandwidth and that is good, say 100 megahertz, mega cycles. And that's good, of course, but it's also bad uh, when you want to apply this here in an audio application because such a chip, when it is not 
made in a specific way on a breadboard can easily start to oscillate. And I've cured it in a very simple way by using here at the input here between the input and the zero because there's a zero here's the audio input and the, the potentiometer from 10k potentiometer from the audio goes <coughs> on its other side to the <coughs> to the zero and that's ground uh, I've used here a 100 picofarad capacitor and in that way all the oscillations are damped so that the chip does not start to oscillate spontaneously. More or less a classic way, uh, not, not only this chip has this problem but many other uh, op-amp chips and even Classical made audio amplifiers have the same problem when the amplification is too high or say how the components are soldered on the breadboard is not okay. They can start to oscillate but the most simple thing to repair that is solder a capacitor of 100, between 100 picofarad and 470 picofarad from the input to ground. Uh, of course it has an effect on the audio bandwidth, that's logical. But uh, I tested this, this out uh, in many ways. 470 picofarad from the input of such an audio amplifier to ground only limits the highest frequencies uh, going from 20 kilohertz or higher. So, that was a lot to tell. Let's listen how this chip sounds. Uh, of course you can boast that you have made an audio amplifier that has such a low distortion. Anyway, let's listen. I have to put in the MP3. So it's running and now the, the screwdriver, I have to search for the, a mini screwdriver with which I can set the input level of course. I had to do that earlier. Well, found it. Let's listen. So this is how a distortion level of 0 0.000 etc. sounds. And it now works on 4 volts and I mean of course it's a double voltage so uh, that means that the effective voltage is eight, approximately 8 volts. Let's go to the highest voltage that my double power supply can give at the moment approximately 15 volts. Let's listen again. Can we get more audio out? I don't think we get more energy out, but anyway, no problem. Uh, at least you can say you have made a hi-fi audio amplifier. Really hi-fi.
so thanks for watching I think well I have to say the chip has a very nice sound the LMA49600 schematic again. Thanks for watching again. And this was all.